Hi. We all know where we come from. Right? We all start off as a unicellular zygote, just like an amoeba or a paramecium. After that, we do mitosis and become multicellular. But the mystery is how from a multicellular ball of identical cells, we can become this complex organism. How do the cells know what they are supposed to be? For instance, here, the cells choose to become... Wait, this cell seems to be a bit confused. Come on, change your idea. Now, that's better. Now, returning to our discussion, how would each of these cells know they are supposed to become different organs? Well, in today's Bio world video, I'm going to try and explain this mystery to you. But before that, let's have a look at the STPM syllabus. In the STPM syllabus, you should be able to give brief description of the different stages in embryonic development. So let me introduce you to the stages. These are the different stages. We'll start with the beginning of the whole story, that is fertilization. Now, after six hours, there will be a zygote. Now, this zygote will undergo mitosis, which we will call as cleavage, for a period of one week to form a morula and eventually a blastula. Now this blastula will carry out implantation and inside the endometrium, the blastula will carry on a process known as gastrulation to form a gastrula. Okay, now after that, the gastrula will carry out a process known as organogenesis for a period of three months, and an embryo will develop. Now, the embryo will be safely inside the placenta by now, and the structure of the embryo starts to develop into a human-like form, which we call the fetus. Now, after nine months of pregnancy, parturition, that is the giving birth process, will occur, and you will have a happy little baby. Now for today's video, I will be explaining the process of transformation from zygote right up to the process of organogenesis. This will cover what we call as the embryo development. As usual, our story will begin with spermy and ova where fertilization occurs to form the zygote. Now, what the zygote will have to do in a period of three months is, first, it will carry out cleavage in the first week. Following that, it will carry out a process known as gastrulation and end with organogenesis. So, after organogenesis is completed, the structure that was originally a zygote will now be called an embryo. That is the embryonic development that I will be describing today. Let's start with cleavage. The first step of embryonic development involves cleavage, which is actually multiple mitosis, meaning that mitosis will be carried out repeatedly to change this unicellular zygote into a multicellular tissue. So the first mitosis takes 36 hours until two cells are formed. The second mitosis takes 60 hours to form four cells. Now, between each mitosis, the cells are not 
given the opportunity to grow. So, you will notice that the cells are actually becoming smaller. Now, in another 72 hours, the four cells become what we call an eight-cell embryo. Now, at this stage, a process known as compaction will occur. Compaction is when these eight cells will tightly start to attach to one another to make a clump of cells. It is possible that if compaction does not occur efficiently, the possibility of forming twins can start here. That is, when the cells are tightly arranged, it will make a single organism. But if they are loosely arranged, the probability to have more than one organism arrives. So anyway, let's talk about a perfect compaction. So once the ball of cells are compact, mitosis will carry on repeatedly until we get a structure called the morula. So if we want to describe morula, morula is a compact ball of cells. So you see the word compact comes from the process of compaction. So now we move on to changes that will occur in the morula. The process of cleavage occurs in the fallopian tube. So, when the morula arrives at the ending of the fallopian tube, the morula will undergo some changes. The cells inside the morula will begin to rearrange so that now the structure is a hollow ball of cells. This space here will be filled with fluid and it is called the blastocele. The cells will be called the blastomere. So the structure is called the blastula. This is the final stage in cleavage just before this structure enters into the uterus to carry out implantation. Now we've learned in our video on pregnancy that the blastula will carry out mitosis to develop finger-like structures called trophoblasts to enable implantation to occur. The details of the process can be found in my video on pregnancy. So what I'm going to do next is explain what happens after implantation. The process that occurs in the endometrium is called gastrulation. In gastrulation, the blastomia cells in the blastula will rearrange. This time, it will form three layers of germ tissues. So this is the beginning of tissue formation. So you have the first layer, second layer and third layer. Please keep in mind, eh, the word germ here has nothing to do with microorganisms. Germ here is referring to the original tissues. Okay, so this three-layered structure is called the gastrula. So at the ending of gastrulation, a gastrula is formed. For future discussion, I am going to use a more simple drawing. So, blastulas will look like this and the gastrula will have these three layers. The first layer is the ectoderm, the second layer is the mesoderm and the third layer is the endoderm. The hollow space that was earlier the blastocele now is called the archenteron. So that is the gastrula. Next, we see the changes that happen to the gastrula for the process of organogenesis. Organogenesis is when 
the three germ layers develop into bases of organs. They don't develop into organs yet because that will happen during fetal development. In the embryo stage, the germ layers will just be assigned their roles. So in other words, they are like told what they are supposed to become. So I will explain each layer separately. That is the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. I'll start off with the ectoderm. The outermost layer of the gastrula is the ectoderm. So naturally, this tissue is going to develop the outermost layers of the organism. This includes the epidermis layer of our skin, nails, eyes, teeth, even our mouth. But the ectoderm also undergoes some changes where it moves inwards forming a neural plate which will elongate into a neural tube. So the cells located at the neural tube will then develop into the central nervous system. This will include organs such as the brain, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the spinal cord, the sensory receptors. So remember, although ectoderm is in charge of developing the external structures of our body, it is responsible for one important internal system, that is the central nervous system. So imagine if any damage occurs during embryo development to the neural tube, then the baby that is born will have a damaged central nervous system. We move on next to the second layer, that is the middle layer, the mesoderm. The mesoderm is the middle layer of the gastrula. So it is responsible for the development of the middle or internal systems of our body. So to do that, the mesoderm will transform into four specific locations known as the notochord, somit mesoderm, lateral plate mesoderm and nephrogenic mesoderm. Since there are many systems involved, I will take you step by step from the outside of our body to the inside. So we start with the outside of our body, that is the skin. Now earlier I told you that the skin is developed from the ectoderm, but that is the outer layer of the skin called the epidermis. The skin has an inner layer called the dermis and that layer is developed from the lateral plate mesoderm. Note that in my pictures, I will be using color codes so that you can match the system to the mesoderm involved. Now, let's remove the skin and inside we have the muscular system. The muscular system develops from the somit mesoderm. Now remove the muscles and you get your bones. The bones, however, are developed from two different parts of the mesoderm. Firstly, we look at the skull and the vertebral column. The middle part of our skeletal system is developed from the notochord. In an embryo, the notochord will actually give support to the structure of the embryo, but then once the baby is born and starts growing, the notochord will transform into a complete skull and vertebral column. I would like to point out here that students make a common mistake where seeing the word notochord, they assume notochord will develop the spinal cord. So please remember, spinal cord develops from the ectoderm. The notochord protects the spinal cord. Now the rest of the skeletal system, your hand bones, leg bones and all, originate from the summit mesoderm. 
let's have a look at other systems. Let's take your circulatory system. Even your circulatory system is developed from two different mesoderms. The heart is developing from your lateral plate mesoderm, whereas the circulatory system, this includes your blood circulatory system as well as your lymphatic system. Both these systems are developed from the nephrogenic mesoderm. Oh, wait, some more. We have the reproductive system and the excretory system. These systems are developed from the nephrogenic mesoderm too. A simple way to remember is you see your excretory system involves the kidneys that have nephron. So the name nephrogenic mesoderm. So I hope that is of a bit of help. Okay, we move on to the final layer of the gastrula. That is the endoderm. So you just have to imagine what is the innermost structure of our body. It has to be our digestive system. So the endoderm and the space here, the acantron, is actually the center part of our body where food passes through. So the endoderm is responsible for your digestive system as well as your respiratory system. So now, each layer of tissue knows what it has to become in the period of nine months. So with that, we have completed the discussion on cleavage, gastrulation, and organogenesis. So in my next video, I will cover the balance that is the development of the fetus as well as birth of the baby. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.